the overarching messages that come through in this book, Do Unto Earth, It's Not Too Late, consist of our needing to understand that we each have the power within us. You are listening to Climate of Joy, the podcast where we talk about climate change and consciousness in light of what quantum science is telling us about reality and the dramatic opportunity for healing that the climate emergency offers. I'm Christine penner a self-described climate crone who is a Canadian mom of two, three if you count Jemmy, my little Frenchy Spaniel cross. I'm an author, a speaker, and an energy intuitive specializing in loosening the invisible knots that keep us stuck in unhealthy patterns at both the personal and collective level. This podcast is being recorded on the traditional and unceded territory of the Lekwungen peoples and the Esquimalt, Songhees, and Waisanich First Nations. Recognition and respect for these people's past, present, and future presence and caretaking of this land is essential to reconciliation. As a settler, I want to honor and thank the original peoples of this territory and also recognize that my presence here is the result of European colonization, which has had devastating impacts for the original people of this territory and right across Turtle Island. So it is the eve of the UN Climate Conference, COP28, the 28th annual United Nations Climate Conference, and it turns out climate change is still an issue and is more of a threat than ever. We are in a climate emergency. This year's summit, COP28, is being held in the United Arab Emirates, which is one of the world's biggest oil producing nations. And it is being chaired by the head of their state oil company. So makes one a little disappointed, more than a little disappointed and cynical and perhaps looking for some hope. So that is what this episode's guest is here to share with us. I am so excited today to welcome Carol Serene Borgens to the Climate of Joy podcast. And Carol is a best-selling author, an intuitive medium, and channel for Divine Spirit Wisdom Source 3 Packs. Carol and I met just a couple of weeks ago here in Victoria at an intuitive uh, arts festival. And we got to talking, especially when she showed me one of the books that uh, she has co-authored. It's called Do Unto Earth, It's Not Too Late. She's written other books and she has a new book that has uh, just, has it been published this year, Carol, your latest book? Last month. Last month. So she's going to be talking about- October 3rd. Yeah. Okay, so very recently. I hope you're going to uh, introduce our uh, listeners to that as well. But I'm so uh, struck by even just the, the title drew me in, Do Unto Earth. Of course, uh, that's, is that the biblical reference, Do Unto Others? But it's... Uh, yeah, Do Unto Earth, It's Not Too Late. Um, yes. the, it's Not Too Late was added by the publisher. He mm. wanted to ensure that people understand that. We um, have work to do, um, and we can be effective in the work that we do towards uh, the rescue, I'd say, of planet Mother Earth. And he wanted to know that we all have the power. So he added the, it's not too late. And I love that you've got your version all marked up, just like I do. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's a very rich book, uh, many layers. And so while we're uh, holding up our copies, why don't we tell our listeners where they can get a hold of it if they want to? Certainly. Uh, We make it easy. It's available on Amazon at .ca.com. It's available in the print version. It's available in ebook. 
And for those who must have it, it's an audio book as well. Wow. Yeah. So, so it's all there. That's great. I really like that you emphasized uh, the subtitle, It's Not Too Late, because there's some pretty grim news out there uh, right now for people who are concerned about how we treat our fellow human beings, how we treat the animals that we share uh, the earth with. And if you're watching this news about climate change, there's some pretty grim news out there right now. Um, like we're very close to a tipping point uh, over which the science, the scientists are telling us it's going to be difficult to get the, the balance back. And so here we are. We want to uh, hear why it's not too late and we want to have hope. So what can you share that you've been gifted with or that you have insight in from the work that you do? I wonder if I could just take a moment in answering that question to let your audience know who PAX is. Mm, yes. Um, and um, the source of the information in all of my books and uh, also the greatest blessing of my life as a as a guide and uh and co-author and jokingly i say he's not my ghost writer he's my <laughs> co-author <laughs> i refer to pax as he pax is known as the divine spirit wisdom source. Pax is not one individual. Pax is the collected universal consciousness, the greater wisdom. My use of the reference he is due to my having channeled Pax for over 25 years. And it has come to this association of ours that I, I call him a he. So be aware that we're not preaching something here from an individual spirit. It's the collected wisdom that we are blessed with being able to benefit from the sharing of knowledge. I think I'd like to share that the overarching messages that come through in this book, Do Unto Earth, It's Not Too Late, consist of our needing to understand that we each have the power within us. We have the gift of being able to make change in our world if we will trust in ourselves that we indeed have this personal power. And as to what your question is about going forward in the healing of Mother Earth, Pac's favorite I think message to us is look to the past to find your future. Look to the past to find your future simply means that if we examine the methods used by our forefathers, by our ancestors in working with the earth, in particular our indigenous uh, First Nations peoples whose utmost respect and reverence for planet Mother Earth was their guide in how they treated the earth, the animals, the plants, the dirt, the soil, absolutely everything. They sustainably harvested, they respected, they took only what they needed. They did not overfish, uh, they did not clear cut forests. The things that we do now that have resulted in the trouble we're in. So as Pax says, if we look to the past, those ways of treating the earth, the, the crops, uh, the forests, the oceans, we will find our way forward. I can honestly say that for many, most even, that's a foreign concept, totally foreign and does not fit into our technical world of today. So and it's need... our job to yes. help that along, find a way for that. Yes. Sorry, what were you saying? No, and I was just going to say, when you say it's foreign, do you think the it's the idea is foreign of looking to the past or the reverence and the respect that our Indigenous people have is something that we have not 
been brought up with I th- those of us. Yes. Well, I think that both really, because looking to the past it is not something that people consider doing. And in terms of taking baby steps with how we treat Mother Earth, it's just not how it's done today. And this notion requires a lot of educating of our people today. Whether we be talking to people about (laughs) taking out your front lawn, people, and plant your own vegetables. Um, Well, gosh, maybe the city council doesn't allow for that in your neighborhood. But if we can plant and uh, harvest what will help our family uh, rather than going to the grocery store and buying something that's packaged and shipped maybe from across the globe, um, that makes much more sustainable sense. And by the way, also helps the budget. Right. Food, not lawns is a very vital global movement. As you're talking about Indigenous wisdom, I'm reminded of the book Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Kimmerer. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I have it. That. Okay. I have the book, so, yes. Yes. So, you know, she is just one of the rising voices that have been so silenced in our settler culture. And I, I'm a, a settler. I'm on uh, Indigenous uh, territory, unceded Indigenous territory here uh, on Vancouver Island. And I want to acknowledge that. So I really appreciate that message that we need to look to the past. We need to follow the wisdom that's being offered to us that is so generously being shared with us, right? It's it's has been from the beginning. That's how we managed to to uh, thrive in this country on Turtle Island initially, right? Because of the generosity of the Indigenous people. So is there anything else? I know Pax has a fair bit to say about greed, which Indigenous teachings, there are Indigenous teachings about greed. It really is culturally so much more of an issue uh, in our culture. They had a different approach to sharing. Do you want to talk about uh, that or uh, what else would you like to share? Pax's message about greed, about hate, about war, about such things comes down to one word, which is love. Mm. He teaches that if we truly love and respect one another, we could not function in greed or hate, or want more for ourselves than others have when others may be in greater need. Greed is a lack in a person that they feel that they must have more and more and more. And what Pax wants to share with us is it's wrong. We know it's wrong. And we need to understand that is a part of the greater teaching of how to repair our world today. It comes down to love and respect for all other people, whether we know them or not. <clears throat> he talks greatly about corporate greed, political greed, and then personal greed on the part of people, uh, you know, in the workplace, perhaps. It's love that. If, if we chose to <laughs> even start small and go with like and respect and love, we would not act in such ways. And greed we think of as, as wanting to amass wealth in terms of monetary wealth, but greed extends to hurting our planet if we decide that our greed extends to not cutting three trees, but let's clear cut the entire hillside. This is corporate greed. And this is so detrimental to the health of our planet. It's the same as if there is a quota for fish and you are a commercial fisherman. Maybe you just take more, a little more each time. And Overfishing is the result, and we know what happens to to entire parts of our country when fish stocks are down, such as has happened in the maritime provinces. No, I mean, you think it's obvious that the long-term uh, results of 
of uh, slash and burn economy, as it were, whether it's fishing or actual trees or whatever, it should be obvious. And yet here we are. And I guess what's coming up for me is that Pax is message of, of love is so lines up with what Jesus said, what you know, all of the great religions have said, and yet here we are in the 21st century. And is it is there something different now? Are we going to learn the lesson that we're all connected? And uh, that I guess, I guess, I hope so. But you have to look around, there's more conflict even than when you and I talked several weeks ago. Yeah, and we, we touched on this. And I wanted to mention I think that maybe not all of your audience understands how they are, in fact, connected with each other. We're all connected. We're all how we refer to it as vibration. And we talk about raising our vibration in happiness and joy or lowering it in depression and dysfunction, perhaps. When we connect with others uh, and raise our vibrations together, we are able to change the world. We can change what goes on around us. We can change uh, for the better. And we can change the minds and hearts of people who hadn't been a part of the solution. They had simply been a part of the problem, whatever the problem might have mm -hmm. been. We need to understand that we're all connected and that we can make a great difference in our world when we come together in positivity and thoughts and intentions of healing. Don't you think? I I agree. Are you familiar with David Hawkins' work of the um, vibrations of love or above? So 500 and uh, is... is uh, I'm not love. deeply familiar, but yes, right. I am. Yes. Somewhat. And it's... it's becoming a little bit more common to hear that term. And so anger and depression and those kind of resentment are very low vibration energy. Oh, yes. And so, and, and we're human, right? We are going to feel them, but it's all about kind of feeling them and releasing them rather than uh, hanging on to them. I mean, yeah. this is something I love to talk about because I release trapped emotions with the emotion code and the body code. And it's so important. And we, in my, uh, from my perspective and in my work, we actually inherit some very low, can inherit some very yes. low vibration mm -hmm. energies. And so doing that healing work is so important. Uh, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be the emotion code but if you're on your a healing path and you're raising your vibration it does ripple out now what about those people who go oh that sounds very airy fairy and uh, give <laughs> well, me we some have, we have a solution for that we are supposed to function with an attitude of gratitude and it is simple and it is taught that when we wake up in the morning, then or, or before our feet hit the floor, we are to express our gratitude for another day. We are to express our gratitude perhaps for a good night's sleep and our gratitude for being given this day. And I believe that sets the tone for the day with people. It's a small step. But it begins the day with a smile, with a feeling of thanks uh, for, for what has been gifted. And I consider each day a gift as I do a good night's sleep. And that sets, a, I believe, a pattern for people to begin in the process of recognizing their need to express gratitude to others, to themselves, to the universe, uh, and expressing that gratitude uh, to the universe, and I think, and to others, again, makes us feel a part of that greater picture, the greater group in which we can 
participate with raising our vibrations in thankfulness. And this begins it each day. I, each I love that. I love that. It's very practical for those of our listeners who want something practical. And it really does shift the vibration, if that's the language you want to use, just the mindset, right? If you are um, making a decision to be grateful for whatever it is, we yeah. all have different yeah. situations. You know, I, I really began to focus on this when I had a friend She's passed over now. But if I would ask her about something perhaps uh, coming up tomorrow and that maybe she'd like to go to, mm -hmm. she would always tell me that she would have to wait and see how she felt in the morning. Okay. That was how her attitude was going to be, not her physical body. And in trying to explain to her that she was the creator of her own self and how she was going to feel because she would decide in the morning how she was going to feel. Uh, and that would be extraordinarily wonderful. Uh, but she and others don't seem to, to see that. And again, it comes back to my, my knowing that we each have the personal power to manage our lives and to bring ourselves to the heightened awareness of what we are meant to be, what is perhaps our purpose in this lifetime and be joyous that we have uh, recognized it and uh, set about to make whatever it is happen for us in giving back to this planet and our fellow human beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, those are, I'm just, I'm taking it in and, just want to acknowledge that that how important that is that information that you're sharing that we can all have an impact on our own lives as well as sending the ripples out i think a lot of people can feel powerless i i'm and i'm going to speak specifically looking at climate change because it's such a huge issue and it's a global issue and people go, oh, you know, I, there's, there's nothing I can do about it. And I've always felt from my earliest days, you know, as an activist that I don't know, I can't, maybe can't do everything, but I at least can do something. Yes, we so. each can do many somethings, I think. In, yes. in our lives. And Pax talks about uh, so many aspects, whether it be, well, the bottom line is, let me say this first. Once we gather together as a people, whether our group is, is a small one or a giant one, it is our role to ask for change, whether it be to corporate or government, whatever it may be, we tackle it on the levels that we are comfortable and confident tackling it, asking for change, whether it be, for example, in this book, Do Unto Earth, Pax talks about the use of hemp in building, for example, hempcrete is replacing concrete, and hemp grows in rapid fire time and and replaces itself when it's harvested and taking away the need for the the ingredients in concrete production that are not useful for our planet earth mm -hmm. and there are things found in nature such as our plant medicine such as building um products that if we ask for those to be used in place of other things, we can make a difference. And that's, again, gathering together as individuals to form the powerful group and make that change. It, it doesn't have to be on a global scale. Each person has, to, has the capacity to make a difference in the neighborhood or just on the street, or it begins and grows from there. And of course, teaching the children uh, is a, a major part of this. 
if we go to our indigenous ancestors and we look at how they harvested plants and grasses for medicine, for food, for building materials, how they used all of what they harvested. If it's a tree, the wood was used, the bark was used. All of the habits that they had that left almost no footprint on Mother Earth are what we could and should be striving to uh, to do for ourselves now. And the 21st century version of that, because it was smaller population and yes. that sort of thing. But but I, I know a good friend of mine who's Indigenous would say when we talk about harvesting resources, she would say, no, like trees aren't our resources. Those are that actually, uh, she says that makes them different from us. You have to recognize that they're their kin and beavers aren't resources there we're all here together that connected consciousness and Mm -hmm. and for me that was a good reminder just about how I just take it for granted that we talk about resources and it's a reminder that there's a different way of looking at the world there absolutely is and I think that one of the major hurdles we have to overcome is we're such a technical world. To speak of these things to people of certain generations, it would just fall on deaf ears because they've they've not grown up with it. They've not been schooled about it. The it being our our Aboriginal elders, our 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 forefathers who did things in a sustainable manner. And how did you call it? A slash and burn? No. Yes. yes, that's exactly it. So our role here, I think, is educational. Really. Sharing with people what was, what could be, and what could come of it, and uh, all for the greater good. But we well, have to educate. And I'm I'm really glad you said that, uh, Carol, because here we are talking about what's important and what gives us hope and what vision that PAX offers on a podcast. So hopefully our listeners will feel that if not teaches them something new, reminds them of something and that uh, they know is true within them. So is there anything else before we wrap up that you want or that? Uh, packs might want to share with well the uh, thank you for that and if I may uh, could I mention Pax Pax's latest book with me yes. the soul healing book okay breaking the chains of past life influence Ooh, do talk about that well Please. thank you this is a book um, this is my seventh book uh, channeled <clears throat> From PAX. It was published um, October 6th. And Soul Healing and Breaking the Chains of Past Life Influence. Um, the, the intention here is to, and I'll read from the cover, reclaim personal power over addictions, dependencies, and dysfunction. And it is a guided journey to healing and wellness. The premise here is this. It is believed likely that we each have experienced physical or emotional wounds or trauma in past lifetimes, and those unresolved hurts are imprinted on our souls. It is our souls that travel with us through lifetimes, and if we can identify and heal those past hurts, we clear our present life from associated limitations and challenges. So that's what that book is about. What we learned, uh, what I learned through working with people doing past life regressions over the years is that people are triggered in this lifetime by things they have no, no idea of or reason to understand why. They become depressed, have anxiety, addictions, uh, life uh, limiting conditions that 
seemingly are not able to be identified uh, by Western medicine. And they are left over uh, from, from incidents in past lifetimes. So in a nutshell, there are processes in this book that guide uh, the reader at home with, with their higher self, their inner guidance, to access the pertinent past lifetimes that have uh, that hold the connection to what is triggering them today, whether it be alcohol, drugs, gambling, uh, depression, anxiety, rage, anger, behaviors, codependencies, things of this nature can be traced to that lifetime. If the, the reader can um, reach that lifetime and view it as a uh, observer only, not um, re-experiencing any visceral feelings, uh, they can see what happened, who did what to whom, in other words, understand it, uh, release it, and move on into this life of wellness and high functioning that they are destined uh, to live. And it is a guided journey. Again, you can, it's it's precisely almost what you would experience uh, with a hypnotherapist. It's a do it yourself. I don't mean to make light of it, but it, as Pac said, it's not rocket science. We follow the steps and we get mm -hmm. to that lifetime. Maybe there's more than one. It, it's in the book and it's a blessing. It's a gift. And I am so pleased with and proud of the messages in this book from Pax to people to ensure the reader that they have a destiny for the greater good of themselves and those they touch. So thank you for letting me mention it. It too is available on Amazon. Okay, perfect. And there'll be links in the show notes uh, to both of the books of Carol's that and that speaking of links, I am at carolserenborgans.net, and the links are there. All right. And I will include Thank you those again. in the show notes uh, as well. And as a soul detective, uh, you are speaking my language when you're talking about trauma uh, from past lives and uh, releasing it, how it impacts this life. And again, it ties into our larger conversation today because this is the time for healing. This is the time to do our healing, to raise our own vibration to and to heal the earth, because it really is connected in ways that we just can't even imagine. We are so uh, interconnected and our healing just raises that boat, you know, uh, as they they say, a rising tide uh, yes. lifts, lifts uh, yes. all boats. And thank you so much for sharing uh, the wisdom that you are bringing into the world. We thank Pax for being part of our uh, connection. And yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's been an honor and a great pleasure. If you are ready for more peace in your life, even in the climate emergency, head over to climateofjoy.com to grab your free copy of Tap Into Peace. Till next time, be kind to each other. Remember, we are all just walking each other home.